what makes the shop so special is that all of the parts here that are old and touches that I've put in, they've all kind of come together to form this really beautiful place that's like a museum and it's a butcher store, but somehow it works here. My name is Jennifer Prezioso and we are at my butcher shop on Elizabeth Street in downtown Manhattan in Little Italy. It's uh, Albanese Meats and Poultry and I'm the butcher here and I run this shop which my family has had for almost a hundred years. It's pretty remarkable how we've kind of somehow stayed here all those years when a lot of people left the neighborhood. It kind of was supposed to just close at some point. I don't think I was supposed to be here, but I think if there's anyone that was gonna do this, like it's me, because I care about everything in here. What my grandfather did here and my great-grandmother did was really special. Like, people need to know about it. At the store, I sell beef, I sell pork, veal, lamb, chicken. Then I have sausages. For the beef, I have ribeye, strip loin, filet, short ribs. Then we have like skirt steaks and other kinds of steaks. This is the ribeye, and it's coined the I gotcha steak. So my grandfather, um, he called it that because once you try it, he's got you as a customer. <laughs> he always makes somebody try the steak if they don't know what to get. Well, my grandfather, how he used to say it to me, he would be like, what would you want off the steak? Well, what don't you like? So maybe I'd be like, oh, maybe I just want to trim it here. So it looks like a nice, even piece. So yeah, I just learned from him kind of how to trim it and go along with it. That's how you do the steak. <laughs> I like to say I'm the fourth employee because before this it was my grandfather uh, and his mother and before that it was uh, my great-grandmother and her husband. He came from Sicily right after World War I. This block in particular was very much a provisions block so we were not the only butchers on the block. There were about eight or nine butchers. When my grandpa was growing up, there used to be, you know, live poultry markets down the block. Now all these fancy shops are there, so. There's something living in the walls of like the history and our family. My great grandparents started the shop, Chenzo and Mary. Then in the 50s, my grandfather, Mary's son, my grandfather Mo, he basically took over the shop with his mother because his dad passed away. Then they continued the store and they lived for so long that no one took over the store after them. No, you're fine. They're interviewing me about something. So that's, we're still open, so. Um, <laughs> do you guys have ground beef and ground pork currently? Yeah, so three pounds all together. Enjoy. <laughs> Bye, take care. I'm gonna debone some lamb. So this is the leg. It's a one of two of the pair. As you can see, that's the leg. <laughs> Feel your finger along the bone. Follow the bone. That's the shank meat, which is delicious, like an asibuco. And there she is. You know, butchering the meat like this is enjoyable for me. You're working with your hands and making something, and it's definitely cool to see the process and feel with your hands because there's an art to it, so it's you're like watching an artist at work. <laughs> Cutting is almost, in a way, a bit meditative, and it's really calming. It's like really peaceful to do it. The store has tons of treasures that I've found over the years. These are my great great grandparents. I believe from their wedding in 1903. That's my great grandma's family. And at this point, they've all become butchers. That's my great grandmother. As you can see, she's cutting some boneless ribeye. My grandpa was never happy when people came to take photos of him, but sometimes, like, if they warmed up to him or bought meat, like he'd, you know, work with them. And a friend of mine drew that for my grandpa and like made the frame. Neighbor just gave me this photo she had taken of my grandfather probably about 15 years ago or so. This is a photo of the two of us that I really love. That's him cutting some lamb chops when they used to be cheaper. So I was 
born and grew up in Brooklyn, in the south part of Brooklyn, like Bensonhurst area. You know, a lot of the immigrants that came here and came to Elizabeth Street, they all eventually moved to other parts. And I was a really good student. I also really loved the arts and I got into that at a really young age. I would, was dancing and singing and acting and that was really much a part of my life from like my entire childhood into my adulthood. I very much was like a person that always had an interest in something and I just like went and did it. Whether the world wanted me to or not was like another thing. But acting stuck with me and I loved doing it. I loved performing. Then I went to college and that I got a bachelor in fine arts in acting and went to London and studied there and then I had it in my head like I wanted to do Shakespeare and but then the world was like, ah, you're really good, like Marissa Tomei. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Growing up and other people are not doing what I'm doing. So it's hard to be so strong about having that, that vision of what you want. Uh, but I kept being interested in other things. That's a nice one. We just picked up a pork belly and a couple of other things that I needed we're going to the city now, and we're gonna be picking up uh, just a few more things, like some bone marrow, some short ribs, and a couple pieces of skirt steak. Basically, I started helping him at the shop because of driving. So he used to drive every day into the city and do all of this that I'm doing now, uh, until he was 93, <laughs> which sounds crazy, but he was very, he was very independent, he was very stubborn. And so one day he had a problem. He probably like missed a turn and we had him on my phone, like find my friends. <laughs> we knew when he left the store. Finally he answered the phone and I basically through like, through find my friends, I like directed him home. So then he called me the next morning at like 7.30 and he was like, so uh, you're gonna pick me up? So I was like, yeah, no problem. So I drove him in and that was uh, November 2017. So then I started being just more interested in, in trying to help the store have more business. You know, I would put up little signs of how much things were. I would take the money from people, but he was still like very much cutting a lot of the stuff. So just little by little, it turns into uh, me learning how to do it. I caught him at a particularly lovely moment in his life where he needed someone. There was a point in like 2019 where he uh, wasn't able to do the things he used to be able to do. And eventually like I was doing everything here and he would just, you know, sit and watch me. And there was definitely already a rite of passage of, of handing the store over. Even though my grandpa's not here with us anymore, um, he passed in 2020 from COVID in April. And I think it's uh, really important to keep it going and, and do the things that I told him I wanted to do here as well. He didn't really understand like why I wanted to be here either uh, because he loved seeing me on stage so much. Like he loved seeing me act. He was like, so when I die, you're gonna take over the store? <laughs> like, just like that. And I was like, yeah, that's, that was what I was thinking, like, what do you think about it? And he was like, okay, like, yeah. So in a way, like, I've inherited all of these, <laughs> all of these things, they've become mine and the store is like my child. And I felt like whatever happened, we were just grateful to like have those moments together. Like him being here was so important. And for me to be able to do that for him was like the best thing I could have done as like a, granddaughter. Being like a fourth generation or third generation Italian immigrant, it is instilled so much of the hard work. You just like saw it so much in him because like he just, he just did everything on his own and, and worked so hard. And there was never like that, that question of like, what about me? But it was like, you do it for your family. Do I think he worked too much? Like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> he should have taken some more vacations. They live their, their whole lives here, and I, and I think it's something that we can take with us. 
the importance of family and the importance of like having something and being proud of it, the importance of being kind and having a community. You don't know it until you come here and you're like in the shop. Whenever we go to a place that's part of New York, you're like, ah, oh, I feel like a part of it. I, I feel like a part of this whole thing whatever this thing is. And this whole place used to be very much like that. This was all a family. I'm here really with the purpose to serve what they've done. This is Zahara. Zahara's been coming here a while. <laughs> Zahara also made this lovely embroidered apron. Bye. You know, it's not just about the meat, it's about like what community has been created here and this neighborhood. And, you know, I used to complain all the time when I would hear about a store close that was here for a long time. And this was a moment that I said, wow, I really have the power to, <laughs> to save uh, what's left. And I think that's what makes it so interesting and worth me staying here is that no one can do what I'm doing right now. No one can be me. There is no obligation to keep this store going. I'm solely doing this for my own enjoyment to see it, to live a, a beautiful life. And that's kind of what I've learned through this process. I've learned now I just, I have to just do what my gut tells me to do. The world puts you in a place and then it gives you a choice of being like, you wanna do this or you could do this, but it would be really fun if you did this, <laughs> right? That, that would make a good chapter in the book.